Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special Stegmentastic episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. I am mm -hmm. your normal host, Sal, and I am joined today by three supple men, boys, <laughs> who have uh, have graced us with their presence. I'm thrilled to have them. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ryan Stegman, Griffin, and Ethan. Thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Thanks, for having, Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Now, if any of you are confused about what's happening, number one, uh, I was on their podcast, Stegman and his amazing friends, which uh, was a, a a baller of an episode. I had a great time it's up <laughs> on uh, awesome. where podcasts can be downloaded. You can find it there. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah. So we thought we'd uh, we'd reciprocate. Why not come on this show and yeah, talk about yeah. some stuff? Right. Go ahead. Well, your yeah. your your YouTube channel is much more successful than ours, so uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. big time. Big time. Well, we, talk, we talked a lot on the show about how you're killing it over here. I and appreciate. So, yeah. I, we want to come I, be a part of it. I, right? Yeah. No, I appreciate it. I uh, since I am one of the, I think I called myself lower middle class of YouTube. I'll uh, yeah. I'll be happy to take total credit for it and uh, <laughs> and reap the whirlwind, as is my right and privilege in lower middle class. <laughs> Yeah, look, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man. So, uh, seen any good news lately? Any mm. any big things happening mm. in the in the world of comics and your favorite creators? Ryan, are you Not doing anything besides being on vacation? Yeah. <laughs> anything other than I having big say, muscles? Some... <laughs> you do look so buff right now. You're taking up the whole frame. Yeah. Something did happen this week that made my mm. vacation not much of a vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we launched a, uh, a new thing that um, I've had to constantly monitor. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our Substack. Um, KLC mm. Press uh, that Ethan and Griffin now both work for and are getting yeah. paid by money. Yeah, we, yeah. To them. Can, can in the chat it? for money. <laughs> hey, there's already been a ton of chains in the chat, by the way. Yeah, we've got all the chains in the chat. So this is great. Amazing, right? Oh, I, I think we have a lot of uh, crossover here. A lot of people know that kids love chains and uh, genius mm. name, by the way, for your uh, for your company. <laughs> That's all Donnie, I think. Right? Yeah, which is all from oh, Donnie no, Cates, no. who, of course, is the That's other big true. part of the substance. That's, That's not true. true. That's no. not true. No, what really the, why that. So we both were obsessed with the same clip. That's how we came together. That's why we wanted it to be our name. Oh, okay. Because That's awesome. one of the first times we talked, we were like, have you seen or he didn't even say, have you seen? He's like, there's this video of Todd McFarlane, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, the one where he says kids love chains. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like yes, I love that's that your video. bonding moment. I love it. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's something that brought us together and that's why we wanted it to be the company name. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So, okay. I guess we can jump into it because we're already talking about it. So let's do yeah. it. Uh, what? I okay. So where did this start? And was it in the works slash something you thought of before Substack came along, or is this mm. entirely generated from a Substack approach? I did not know um, what Substack was. I I'd never heard of it. Um, right. We actually uh, were all set to launch our. Um, we were going to do Vanish on Kickstarter initially, oh, um, and so we were actually working on our campaign. We were one day from uh, actually, you know, putting it out there, and then um, it was I. Uh, it was I think Scotty called me scotty young and he was like hey don't do that i have something <laughs> for you and he's like nick spencer's gonna call you and he scotty knows me so he's going do not freak out don't freak <laughs> out and because i was like but we're already starting ah! you know and i was immediately yeah. spinning out you know and of course. Uh, he was like just take his phone call and uh you know see what you think and then i took the phone call and you know it was like this tremendous deal where you're like well, this is too good to be true. So you're almost yeah. like, is it too good to be true? And, <laughs> uh, and then I had to call Donnie and be like, hey, man, uh, I think that we should pause everything. And here's why. And he's like, no, we have to keep going forward. And I was like, well, you might want to hear him out. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah because the Kickstarter campaign, it's no small feat, especially oh, in today's be world. A lot of work, right. A yeah. lot of work, a lot of prep, a lot, right. of, a lot of behind the scenes setup mm -hmm. to get that thing going. When you launch a Kickstarter, it's not just like, oh, I have this idea and we're going to figure it out during the 30 day campaign. No, you got to have a lot of set up and prep time, especially for well, people done one, right? so? I I have done. Yes, I've done at least one Kickstarter in my life. Right. And, uh, fully funded, by the way. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that was but that was in the fledgling days. That was like when Kickstarter first started. So you well, know, my man. rewards were super lame, and my benefit <laughs> was uh, was also super lame. But you know what? 
we got we what well, we got we we created the thing. But right. uh, but yeah, man. So you get approached by Nick's. Now, of course, let's 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 contextualize this a little bit for some folk because some folk might not even know what the hell a Substack is, like you didn't until <laughs> until this whole right. thing came about. Uh, now, Substack, of course, started out as a newsletter provider like you, you, platform. you yeah, yeah. I mean, a platform right it's like right, a, yeah. it's like a patreon for journalists originally right yeah. and I think, that, I think that their approach basically is this that they think that people like me or p- journalists that are known like people that have built up their own name right have an audience that will support them that they just don't understand exists yet exactly which is so so basically they're setting you up they're saying here we're going to give you this stuff and we're going to get you jump started, and then you're going to find out that hey, you could have been making money this way the whole time. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Oh, oh no, no, <laughs> oh no! Okay, sorry, I cut well, out for a sec. That's okay, you're yeah. back. Yeah. The comforting thing is, is that if Ryan does cut out, if we lose Ryan at any point, Griffin and I are incredibly entertaining, and we this can is keep true. Going. And knowledge because you now work for this whole thing. So. That's right. Uh, we we, do, we speak yes. for Ryan in a lot of ways. In a lot and, of yeah. In a lot of ways, it's our Substack. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Ryan is working for us. Good yeah. lord. Well. That's true. We can we can talk about it at least a smidge while we wait for Ryan Stegman to get on. We'll some wait good for Ryan to plug the router back in. Oh, there yeah. he is. All right, am I back? Yeah, you're back. yeah, you're back. Okay, so where was I? I was saying that Nick's, you know, so Nick's they make you realize that. that you have mm-hmm. the capacity to have this sort of uh, thing. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And we're frozen. No, you. I mean, we can hear you. This is good. This is live. This is why you do it live, baby. This is exactly why live uh, this is, the, is the thing. Yeah, they're turning out for. But well, we'll just. I mean, we'll just fill until Ryan gets it. back because we, we are here to tell you our success story, which is that we we worked on Ryan's <laughs> podcast for free for two years, and now here we are. We're we got a, we're, we're actual employees. That's it right. It only took two years of free work. Guys. <laughs> you, you can do it too. Hang. You in can do there. it too. It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> Ryan Segman, can you hear us? <laughs> I love the frame that it froze on too because he's so defeated. He's yeah. like, oh. he's, so, he's humiliated. It oh. happens. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, 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 there he is. Yep. You're back. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it keeps freezing every time I start talking. So it's a little uh, irritating. Sure. But... <laughs> of course, all your other tabs, Ryan. Eh, there it goes. <laughs> They're closed. Every there is nothing going on on my computer. Okay. okay. Um. So, okay. This is working. <laughs> Give it a Substack it's not. is <laughs> allowing you to do cool shit. Donnie and Ryan are teasing all sorts of books on there, as far as Vanish, Flood, the one you feed, and yeah, you're getting in on the ground floor and watching the whole process as it comes together. Have you taken a look at the KLC Press thing at all? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I uh, that was that was uh, one of the many Substacks that I have now subscribed to just to get oh, an awesome. idea about what the hell is going on with this thing. Right, because, right, right. Uh, like many people, I was like, "What is even happening? Where did this come from? And right. and and why should I give a shit?" And right. uh, <clears throat> so uh, I can understand why a lot of uh, creatives have jumped on board. Uh, like Ryan right. said at the top of the hour, he, you know, he mentioned that. Uh, you know, Nick Spencer came to him, and that's what I wanted to kind of contextualize because he's right. like, well, well, I can imagine a lot of people being like, well, wait, whoa, whoa, what does Nick Spencer have to do with this? And it's yeah. like, well, because Nick Spencer was brought in uh, almost, I think, just about like six or eight months ago uh, right. by Substack to be their kind of like comic consigliere. Mm, you know, yeah. he, he kind of advises them. The case, yeah. These are the there's so little shakers. information, but depending on where you read, right? I, I, like, there's speculation that it may have been Nick's idea, but mm. but uh, because and he's kind of running the show. Like like as far as working with all the different creators, they're all coming to him with questions. Hey, Ryan. Right. <laughs> all right. I'm hoping for the best. Let's keep going. You guys, yeah. go For a second, let's see if I if I can get a running start here. So go you ahead. Look all right. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. Looking smooth. Yeah. But um. Ryan, we're talking about how you guys are going to be teasing Vanish as well as, you know, Donnie will be talking about the one you feed and Flood and sort of walking the folks through the process leading to the full final product. So you guys are focused so much more on process where some of the other creators are focusing more so on just, you know, the books coming out. Exactly. And And it's a cool way for folks to read them. 
right. uh, in that sort of way. But you guys are going to be more of the peek behind the curtain folks. Right. That's well, I mean, we were already looking for a way to do this. Like it just so happened that we, you know, we didn't, we couldn't afford to, you know, it just, it, it, we didn't have a business plan where we could pay people to do the things that we need to do so that we don't have to do those. Cause I have to draw a book and Donnie has to write books. Right. You know what I mean? So the Substack thing kind of came in and took this idea that I had and that we had talked about for a while and made it possible, you know, where we could bring in. And this was the, <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. This was the idea when we started our podcast, when we started yeah. segment and his amazing friends, Ryan's whole thing was he wanted to to bridge the gap between creators and fans right. in a way that it could give them this inside sort of viewpoint of the industry. And so that was the first thing that he told me when we were starting the podcast was he wants it to be this thing that fans can interact with. And, and we um, did a series of episodes where Donnie and Ryan created a new like concept on the mm. show and people loved it like like and and some of the elements of what they worked on on the show have made it into vanish so oh, it's been okay. the smooth transition of just how these guys want to work on things in front of people and and get everybody involved in the process into this new format and it's re it's really really exciting right I, lo I love how how all these different creators are taking such different approaches you got scott snyder teaching classes on there you got hickman being hickman doing insane audience interactive universes and, uh -huh. and stuff but donnie and donnie and ryan are just like yeah fuck it i don't know come watch us make comics and it's and it's this cool kind of casual like like thing where you're just joining them on on the um on the journey and it's, exactly yeah, we're, we're we're so hyped to be a part of it exactly yeah, it's it's very interesting how um when this whole thing kind of crystallized it all kind of came as one massive uh shotgun blast because yeah. it wasn't just like oh so and so is starting and then you know you hear six months later or two months later somebody else doing something no it's like the big the big splashes were kind of folks leaving or moving from yes. one place to another mm -hmm. but then that really kind of got the conversation going and you found that a lot of your favorite names in the industry yeah. were working with Substack and creating their own projects and, right. and i can see this being and how it obviously is it is it is a it is a competitor with other elements like kickstarter or patreon where yeah. rather than go to Kickstarter and share a percentage of whatever it is that you earn from the audience that you've already retained with this and, and forgive me, not, not forgive me, but rather correct me if I'm wrong, but all the creators involved have been given a particularly, uh, you do, I don't know, would you call it an advance? Yes, mm. I would call that an advance. <laughs> uh, I call it a grant. I like, mean, it's obviously a so grant, it's, right? It's a it's a chunk, right? I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to plug in here, so just keep going for one second. Sure, yeah, yeah, take time. yeah. Do you, well, do you the way he described it to us was that was that they Donnie and Ryan are are approaching this like a business, like they yes. they like they're like we are you know we're starting our little business here where we're going to make comics in front of people. Um, and and treating it like an imprint, like you know, like a skybound. It's like we're setting up shop here on, right. on these Substack grounds. Yeah, um, and yeah, the grant made that possible. Go ahead, uh, Ryan. Yeah. So the grant essentially that was the confusing thing. That's when I said it was too good to be true. It was like, exactly. what are you talking about? Um, because we there was like no strings attached. Mm -hmm. That's what it and, sounded like. Yeah. Right. And so the it, it, that's the cool thing about it is it really feels like they're just like listen, you have an untapped potential that you don't understand. We're going to help you find that. And then we're going to make, you know, everybody's going to make money and everybody's going to be happy. Right. And so far, I mean, it's been, you know, it's, it's, it's been really cool because we have seen, we've, Donnie and I worked hard to build sort of a brand and an audience yeah. and we didn't know why we were doing it. We didn't know if it was ever going to pay off or how it would pay off. Right. Um, but then something like this comes along. It's like now it's, you can capitalize on this thing that you've been doing for no reason before. You know, sure, what I mean? right. sure. Mm -hmm. And 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 you mentioned it earlier when you said it was. It seemed like it was too good to be true. From what we've read in uh, columns and, uh, for lack of a better term, gossip uh, or scuttlebutt, as they might say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it seems that. Substack is looking to break in. They're looking to use the comic book industry as a new way to branch out their own platform. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Spencer is instrumental in 
kind of curating the talent or the the first the big the bedrock of that arm. Right. And because of investors, uh, Substack has a significant amount of capital to invest in the talent. That is to say, right. you guys. And you guys are able to use that talent. And like you said, it, it looked like it was a no strings attached situation where you're being given a grant. And I don't want to get into the specifics. I won't, I won't ask for any numbers, but let's assume that this, I mean, the grant you mentioned seemed good to be true, too good to be true, and uh, is a game changer. It is, mm-hmm. it, it, is, it is funding dreams and it is generating, you know, studios we're seeing right. actual groups of creators working together and just making a product. Like they're basically right. being funded. You're being funded to produce something that you might have done yourself, you know, going from, uh, you know, your, your time on Venom into this new project. This might have taken after Kickstarter, it might've taken a year or two, maybe five, depending on how much of what you wanted to do. But because of this, this windfall, you're able to accelerate your plans and maybe even branch out even further than you wanted to or that you were planning. Exactly. So, so I actually had meetings about this, um, pri- the, the idea of this thing that we get to do now yeah. um, with people. And we were going to start taking this idea to investors. Mm. And so I was going to have to start going to invest. And in, after I had the first couple of meetings, I was like, I don't want this to be my life. I don't right. want to go and pitch this to <laughs> investors. I don't want to do you know, all that, like the, the dance, I was just like, I just want to draw comic books. Yeah. And then <laughs> again, you know, this thing comes along and it's basically just like, here's your investment and now Get draw a comic it. book. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, right. and now let me ask you this. Is there any obligation uh, to produce outside of just make the book, like make the thing? Um, there is an obligation to post, uh, you know, a certain amount amount of times. But okay. Okay. If you're doing this, you're gonna <laughs> post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Like it seems like, duh. You know, like why would we just like we're not? There's no reason to take the money and run. I mean, you could, other than that, you would have to post, you know, a couple times or a week or whatever. Yeah. But why wouldn't you take a stab mm-hmm. at it to build something that can sustain itself and you know continue on in the future. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's kind of the way we looked at it. I mean, I, I immediately started looking at how do I reinvest some of this money to, um, to maximize what we can do with this? Because I think that one of the mistakes that somebody could make is just being like, oh, that money's for me. Right. And <laughs> now I just have to like half-ass this thing. And, right. You know, <laughs> and that's not necessarily a mistake. Maybe somebody, you know, maybe somebody else does that. Um, but in my opinion, it's like, what if we could take this thing and then actually make it a sustainable thing that pays us, you know, enough next year to keep it going. And then the next year and it just keeps going and we just keep getting to make new things that we want to make. And, you know, in my, in my, uh, view, what I would like to do at some point, and I don't know how, like a lot of people have asked us, are we hiring or are yeah. we right? Know, of course, because that's that's the, not and and that's not a that's not an overreach, right? Because oh yeah, there is a potential for that, right? Obviously, right uh, now, it it right. is a little bit of an overreach uh, because uh, no one's allowed to work for them except me and Ethan. Everyone else needs to back off. All right, <laughs> this 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 unhealthy relationship we've developed needs to stay the way it is. Uh, yes, thank you. Just needs more um, money in it. But I think <laughs> you like. Uh, we're going to get our feet underneath us, but of course we would love to be able to like reinvest it. And like my dream is to have like several artists that work with me, just like the old nineties image, image studios. Cause that, cause I've talked to those guys. Um, I, cause I kind of like wondered how that worked. I always thought it, it was fascinating to me that you watched like Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and they brought these young guys in and they yeah. taught them how to draw. And then those guys got really good. Yeah. And then that they got better. Jim and Mark did. Yeah, and I was like, "That is incredible." Uh, so I've always wanted to do that, but you know, when I've talked to them, it, it almost seems like an unsustainable model now, unless you're selling millions and millions of comic books. Because they didn't get any this cash is the model, infusion, right. right? Maybe this is the model now where we can make enough money to invest in teaching, you know, younger people how to do this. Because I, I, I've always thought there was like a, you know, I came up, I didn't go to art school, I didn't have a mentor per se. I had a peer group, 
But I've always thought that that was so, sort of uh, negative about this industry was it was so hard to find somebody to tell you just how to do this job. Right. right. You know, somebody who was already good at it. Otherwise, you're just you're always hanging around with people that are just as good as you. Yeah. Because you're right. all growing together, which is great. That's a great way too. But it would be nice if that group of people that you come up with who are all at the same place as you had the one guy that was way better that could just be like, guys, calm down. Yes. Don't do that thing anymore that you all think is the <laughs> right thing to do right now. Mm -hmm. Just do this. And you know, yeah. that's sure. the way that I, I see that relationship. Right. Yeah. And so it's Providing a mentorship of, of sorts. Mm -hmm. Well, right. yeah, I think because like the best way that I can think to kind of describe the whole thing is what if like an image or like an imprint like Skybound was launching and if you were like, you know, a fan of that, what if you could just like hang out in that office and just right, watch right. the books get made and see it right. all way before it would ever come out in a shop? And yeah. and, right. and if you wanted to sit down in that process and just watch them do it and 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 hear all the talk and hear everything that was going into it, like mm -hmm. like to right. to me, that's like a dream. Like 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 I soak in all that stuff. So like it feels like we're working on something that I'm like, oh, if I were a fan and I am, then I would absolutely jump in on this. Like so, yeah, it's yeah, it's a really exciting thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I did. I did an internship at. Oh, sorry. Oh no, no. Go ahead. I just want to do one more. So I were, I did an internship at Top Cow where I was an English, where I was a uh, an editor. Um, but one of the things that would happen is I would I was the guy that would go to the mailbox to the FedEx box and bring in the new art, and I would check it in. I would have to make photocopies of everything, and I would check it in. You know, like uh, on the invoices and everything. Because back then, it, you know, people still weren't sending in JPEGs. They were sending in actual physical art that we yeah. would have to scan. And uh, I would take those, I would take photocopies. And just having those, my art improved exponentially right. from that time. But I didn't have, you know, the only other way I would ever see what comic book art actually looked like in person was at conventions. And then I'd just get to look at it for like five minutes and I couldn't afford to buy the original. No, right. sure. So right. you know, these things can always, just being around it is so important. So, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, obviously, because we don't know that we'll be able to do this at any point. But that is absolutely, you know, my, my pipe dream for how this could all go. Of course. Because so, because it's like it's like if you're a fan, then you're gonna want to see stuff early. You're gonna want to you're like like you're gonna want to get in on the ground floor of things and like be like, oh, I want to be the I want to be like there at right at the start of Vanish and and be like yeah. you know there to see it first. But the cool thing about comic the comic community is that so much of of comics fans want to make comics. Like that's right. like yeah. like like it's it's this industry that kind of like feeds itself. It's like it's everybody everybody that loves comics is like. Can I do that though? Can I? Oh, sure. like, I, I, and right. and so yeah, like it's. I think so, so much of our audience from the podcast and stuff was at, like they just eat up anything Ryan Gibbs process wise. Like they're so excited about it, and so yeah, like it's been cool to see the excitement. Absolutely. Now, uh, Ryan, the point you made about the 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 old image model or the old studio image model of creating things like like Extreme Studios or Wildstorm, uh, that was only possible because of uh. A, a, a phenomenon you might say right. that that could never be replicated and will only happen at that time right because like you're talking about like pre-orders for gen 13 totaling two million dot like two million right. copies and you're like there's no way you'll ever see those numbers again absolutely and, and the money you know from the from the image documentaries i've seen and from of course just like interaction with some of the pros it's like that the money was uh, was obscene the amount of money right. that was coming through. Uh, and, and again, one of those things that you would assume would you, you'd never see in the industry again. And now what it looks like, and, and it sounds like it is accurate from like the balcony looking down at the situation. It seems to suggest that like, it is just kind of like a, like a no strings. Here is a cash infusion for your aspirations. And is only limited by your imagination, by what you right. want to yeah. do. Like you yeah, can, absolutely. you could be a solo outfit and be like, we're going to make this book or we're going to make this, this, this web comic. It sounds like it's just, as long as it's a comic mm -hmm. and right. you make it and you blog about it, you're good. Right. You've earned your money. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then you can also turn it into a sustainable business. Well, and hopefully. that's the thing that we should talk about because it's not just, I get like, you know, some philanthropic businessman gave everybody like or gave gave some of your favorite creators a bunch of money to make whatever right. they wanted. There's also a subscription plan to this whole thing. And I think we should talk about right. that a little bit because the, the yeah. rewards and the and the and the the options are interesting because 
I think that's what Substack is is counting on, right? They're they're investing in you to grow your brand further and earn on a monthly basis or a yearly basis from that. And so, right. like looking at looking at the KLC Press page, you know, you're here for subscription plan, right? I don't I don't what know what that, that was, room but room? Uh, <laughs> but looking at it. You have a you have a number of options here. Uh, obviously, with the free option, you can get occasional newsletters. But the one that everyone is probably going to consider would be the monthly or the yearly to save money. And the monthly is eight dollars a month. You get a Monday through Friday newsletter. Uh, you get vanish the one you feed and flood digital comics and behind the scenes creation through the pro- final product. Now, what does that mean? What do you what are you getting for a monthly for a monthly subscription? Um, I mean, obviously, we're still figuring out exactly. Uh, all the things that we're going to do. That's part of Griffin and Ethan's job. But um, <laughs> Fair enough. Be, there's definitely like, like next week I'm going to be doing some live drawing. Like we're going to, we're going to start in on where you can come and chat with me as I actually physically draw a page. Okay. Um, so you would be able to see that like almost from the beginning to the end. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there will be you'll be able to see you know as i do layouts you'll be able to see like we we, yesterday's post we put up pencils today's post we put up inks you'll see colors as they come in um you'll see donnie and i occasionally will just having a conversation about where we're going with the story because uh donnie and i have an interesting way of working where we definitely do feed each other quite a bit you know Mm -hmm. idea wise i mean donnie definitely has you know he has those nuclear ideas uh, did everybody else just leave which is yeah I, I i focused on you <laughs> oh, okay. uh, i'm being fancy but all right we'll make it all we'll put everybody back on the screen, screen. Uh, uh, <laughs> um donnie will you know he has the the big crazy ideas but like sometimes it's just like he he does you know stretches of pages in a book where it's just uh this is what needs to happen at the beginning this is what needs to happen at the end ryan go nuts Right, And then sometimes I'll be like, you know, we should talk about this first and then we'll talk it through. And yes. we just sit there on the phone and we just talk. Oh, what would be cool is if, what do you think if I, you know, so, you know, in that, so you'll get to see that. And then, um, you know, we did that in King and Black, the last issue, there's this whole fight scene between um, Null and Venom where he, I mean, I think it was 11 pages where it was just yeah. like, and Venom beats the crap out of Null, spoiler alert. <laughs> but it, I even... I got I got into the story and I did the part where <laughs> Venom holds Null over the city like Null did to vent to Eddie. Yes, you know, and I just thought that was cool. That was a cool thing because when he saw that, he was like, "Oh my god, what a great!" You know, and uh, <laughs> so it's stuff like that that we want to be able to show people. And one of the things that I was fascinated with, and we we kind of tried to bring that to people with when we did these bad kids creative sessions on our podcast, mm. um, I was completely blown away when Marvel invited me to their creative summits. Um, I had never been to one of these things. I didn't know what they were like. Uh, I kind of assumed in my mind what it was, was everybody had written their stories already and they came in and they said, here's what's going to happen. Everybody said, oh, hmm, that's good. (laughs) But really, so the night before the first one, Don, I was like, so I was like, this was before the absolute carnage one. And he's like, he's like, "Um, yeah, so... I know that this is going to happen. We're sitting there at a bar or whatever. He's like, I know this is going to happen. And I know this is going to happen. Uh, and other than that, like, I don't have anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. We're going to tell them that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I started going like, well, what if we had, you know, I would start trying to write a story because I'm freaking out. I'm like, what do you mean? You can't do that. And then I got into the room and I realized this is how it's expected to be. This is how it all comes together. You know, they sit, that's what the editor's job was. It was the, it actually gave me a great deal of respect for editorial that I didn't have. I didn't disrespect editorial, of course. but to me they're I'm the artist. They're like, here's your schedule. Don't mess this schedule up, please. And then occasionally <laughs> they annoy me by being like, yeah, you know, could you fix such and such? And right. that's very occasionally cause I'm perfect. Of course. But, <laughs> they do that. And then so I saw that they how creative their job was and how the room was working and we were just bouncing ideas and you could just say something and then you know somebody would be like, wait, what if we, you know, and they've turned it in and it was just like, whoa, this is like this is how creativity should be. Yeah. So I would like to bring that 
to um, people and we'll, we'll try to find a way for you to see that sort of story inception. What I wish we would have done, I wish we would have had this thing going before Donnie and I conceived of Vanish because we could have just had, you know, these two uh, supple morons, uh, <laughs> they're videotaping, <laughs> uh, they're videotaping it, you know, cause we could have, that could have been something that we could show, but of course now yeah. we've kind of worked past that point, but yeah, next uh, time, you know, so like when we have these conversations, I'd like them to be um, available, you know, to the public and just, I just want the thing that I love the most. So when I got into comic books, I was a little older. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have access to them until I was 15 or whatever. And okay. I got super into Spawn. And Todd was amazing at, in just those two, the, the letters column and then that one page thing at like the Todd McFarlane Production Studios. He was just showing you stuff about like how this was being done. Yeah. And I was so fascinated by that. And I was blown away. And Wizard Magazine would do it, and I would eat all of that stuff up. Yes. And I just want to bring that. I mean, I hope that I'm not like some sort of weirdo that was super into that stuff. I hope that other people are into that too, because you know I could be selling this to just like only people that are exactly like me, which is possible. <laughs> but um, I would like to bring that to people in the same way. Sure. Yeah, I, yeah I, I love those moments from from Wizard and from McFarlane in, in particular. Todd was really, really good at uh, showing you how the sausage was made, but in a really fun kind of way. You need your toys. <laughs> I had to move into a common area. I'm in the house with all my family, uh, because, and I moved into the common area because I had to be next to the uh, the router. You guys Ryan, say you hi? Know, Ryan is three things. Hi, Lily. He's a comic creator. Oh. Ask her what the what her take is on the whole Substack situation. Is it yeah. sustainable? That's right. Um, it's a good business. Will there be physical copies? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's three things. They he's an artist. He's a hunk, but most importantly, he's a family man. Family man. Artist. Yeah. yeah. Hunk. Yeah. Dilf. Yeah. Dilf. Dilf. Absolutely. Yeah. He's a dilf of comic. Most importantly, Ryan. Maybe mute your mic while they're in the room. <laughs> I don't like there are ways around it. We can just listen to this I, I, clatter by these yeah, children. Yeah. But, <laughs> I feel so bad because I think I think kids are adorable and I'm just like, let them let them play. But it's like, yeah, I, yeah. No, I, no, I, Sal, no. This is really unprofessional of them to interrupt the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. It's these, like these, they've never done a podcast before. Yeah. These 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 total these noobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I loved that process, and Todd was really good at making it like look good. You know, where he's like, "Oh, look at all these toys," and you know, even today, like you'll see him on Instagram, and he's like, he's like, "Grah!" Yeah. All right, look at yeah. this, and it's so cool. And you're just yeah. like, I, you just remember what it's like to be twelve, and it's like, dude, he's he knows how to sell. Like, you're right, Todd. That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is cool. You are the one who makes the coolest. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah Todd Todd is uh, really interesting because he kind of comes off as like this lunatic right like the way that he that <laughs> yes. he presents everything but he's not wrong and then you meet him if you start talking to him about business his voice changes and he goes yeah. right into like and he just he's very good at explaining things to you and you're like this guy's like a genius right yeah you know yeah but yeah. so he's like got two different things going on there that you can't quite right. you know he's no. a, he's an interesting guy and sorry about the kids being in the room. That was very funny to me, at least. It's very sweet. I, I kept thinking they were going to leave. It was. You, could, you said you should you should mute it, and then I was like, "Well, they're leaving." And then I realized, "Oh, they're not leaving." <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, my sister came in and was like, "Guys, get out of here right now!" <laughs> and you're like, "Good thing I muted it. I don't want it." <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so let me ask you this, because of course, like this announcement of KLC Press came what, like, seventy-two hours ago. Right. And mm -hmm. there's pages done. How in advance has this been? Like how in the works has this been? We've I've been working on this for months and months now. I don't even want to think about how many months because I should probably have more done than I do. <laughs> but I mean we're 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 the first issue is 30 pages and we are closing in on the end of issue one. Awesome. Um so there was a a long period of us doing the meeting where we talked about what we were going to do. Then there was the 
uh, I had to design the characters and that actually, you know, people, it's hard to explain to people how long that takes because you can shit out a character design, but you're trying to make something that is memorable. You know, you, you have to have that iconic uh, look to them. So, I mean, th totally. that went back and forth. I mean, there was one character that I feel like we took a week on. Um, right. So we, we've been working on this a long time. Like we, we were going, like we were ready to, uh, you know, go to Kickstarter and we were ready to say like, basically the book's about done. We can sell this thing now. Oh, but uh, no. instead we did this and, um, so we, we, we are way down the line. We've got plenty to show. I think a lot of these other ones, I don't think they, I think that they got like thrown into action. Like now I have to make some new books. Right. But fortunately we had the book, <laughs> which is one of the things that I think was enticing to Substack was we started, cause I did those tweets where it was just like, we were going to launch the Kickstarter. So I started putting out these like cryptic tweets about what we had. And then I think they saw that and were like, oh shit, we, you know, they're about to like launch something. We should try and get in on this. And so, right. you know, they, they caught, that's when they contacted us. Right. It was a pretty good time when we did a, uh -oh. we had our two year anniversary podcast for segment yeah. and his amazing friends. We wanted to make that big. And that was when the boys decided they were going to drop the first little details of vanish on the folks. And Ethan and right. I had, of course, known that Vanish was coming down the pipeline. We'd known it was going to be a Kickstarter and whatnot, so we were excited to do that. And then right as we got on the call, right before we went live, the boys say, right. um, okay, I don't know if we can say anything because we've just made a, 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 a deal for, uh, yeah, sure. yeah, for Vanish, <laughs> and it's completely Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like and, everybody was uh, so excited for Donnie and Ryan to work together on something new, and then just as they start to, and it's like, oh, let's talk about it, let's tell people about it, then this unprecedented thing happens in the comic book industry. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's moved so fast. Like, it's been so fast, but um, yeah. we've tried to set it all up and take it in stride. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could... We uh, it, let, me, let me ask you this. Is this something that's wonderful for the creators and that's enough or is this a shake-up for the industry like is this mm. sending a message to the publishers out there that creators have more power or that maybe things need to be changed uh like does this substack shake up is it more of a shake-up than just Hey, you're gonna get a couple of really dope ass things from some of your favorite creators earlier than you probably would have anyway. <laughs> well, it's worth noting that within like a within like two weeks, Scott Snyder's like, I have seven new Comicsology originals coming out, right? And then Webtoon makes a deal with DC, and then Substack is doing all of this. Like, there's right. a lot happening. And there is, but it like is that a deep impact situation right. where it's like it just happens to be two volcano movies at the same time, or is it like? <laughs> Good question. It, was it was it that much of well, like you know was it yeah what 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 uh, what influenced what chicken or the egg right. you know mm -hmm. right I have no idea but I think that with, <laughs> as far as subset, as far as Substack goes uh -huh. um as far as the Substack thing goes I think it's incumbent upon the creators to uh they they got the deal to make really great content that can sustain because if it doesn't sustain then it was just a bubble that happened and went away. Right. So we have to make this into a, uh, a sustainable thing for everybody because sure. if we, so if we do, if we do this well, right. And yeah. then somebody else just wants to do a sub stack and they, they're like, I'm going to create my own comic book and I'm going to put it on sub stack. Uh, they don't have to have the grant to do that. You can just do that and you can monetize right. your own sub stack. So I think that, um, you know, I think that it's only, it's only industry changing as far as we take it. So I think that it's very important to me that we, uh, that we really make this into something that can last because, you know, I've always thought of image comics as, um, this thing that it's almost your duty as a comic book creator to do something. If you get a big enough following to do something over there. Mm -hmm. Because that's the closest thing that we have to a union. We don't have a union mm -hmm. at all. Right. But if Image is successful and anybody can go there and make Marvel and DC money at least on something, then yeah. that keeps the big companies honest. So this is just another route because, you know, we will be publishing these books through Image in the end. 
Um, right. This is more about the enhancement of that process as we get to that point. And you're going to get physical media with some co covers that you, you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Sure. But, you know, I think that if we can also turn this into something that can feed image and feed all of these other things that make the, the creator have more power in the industry, um, you know, then that's great for everybody. Absolutely. Except the big the question, the question that we're drown, <laughs> the, the question that we're drowning in is, will there be physical copies? Like that's what everybody wants to know. And Absolutely. Donnie has, Donnie has very like flat out said, all the stuff we're teasing will be physical. Like, like it's all going to come out. That's, that's, that's just down the line though. You're just way ahead of the yeah. game here yeah, with the sub stuff. You're that's, it's, it's fresh in the digital right. space. Right. Yeah. Cause as I understand it, the, the, the sub stack deal, and again, correct me if I'm wrong because I didn't get a sub stack deal. Uh, <laughs> you bastard. But, uh, <laughs> yes, was, uh yes. yeah, 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 sure. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but my question is, um, or ra rather my, my conjecture is that, Again, no strings attached. Substack doesn't own a, a penny of the projects you create. They just want you None. to come to their form to the to their platform, produce, and you know, God bless, make whatever you want, and you could take it anywhere. You could take it to Image, Dark Horse, Boom, whoever. You could you could self publish it if you want to. It's just as long as it starts here and it's generated here, and you create yeah. like you know your your posts and you have a subscription plan, which is I think intrinsic like you can't not so mm -hmm. but but have right. that in place i mean there's there's even stiff you know contract stuff where if after the first year i don't want to do Substack anymore i own the mailing list right i can download that mailing list and that's mine i can oh, go right. take it anywhere i could just email them from my gmail if I you could like have it. these two make you a <laughs> make yeah. you a whole newsletter yeah. system and yeah that's i definitely know how Substack to do is that. betting on itself right yeah which yeah, that, we can just we can just take that email we can just take that provide. email list over to Supple Stack and mm -hmm. and you know we'll start a whole new thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch Hell it. Yeah. Thing <laughs> that really that really nailed yeah, that really that, landed. That was good, Ethan. <laughs> you know, you throw things at you, you, you throw things at and you see what works and what doesn't. That's true. And that's yeah, that's what know. Substack's all about. <laughs> Good transition, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, as as the great one said, you miss a, you miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take, and so that's right. Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm wondering, you know, Ryan, what are your two cents on? You know, there are kind of we're talking about what is this going to do for creators and the industry, and you know, there are folks like James Tinian that are on, you know, one of the biggest titles uh, ever in Batman, and uh, he's decided I'm done with batman actually i'm gonna leave and i'm gonna do all my own stuff yeah um so is it gonna right. take like the sort of like you don't want to say like checking but it's kind of what it feels like of the big two like uh, is it gonna take these folks walking off the titles like that for them to maybe wake up a little bit and say maybe we should be treating our creators a little more fairly a little better or what I don't... So <laughs> I don't... Like, no. there's no I'm... way <laughs> I, I don't see TC. Can you, can, am I frozen? No, no, you're, you're good. good. You're good. You're I'm good. sorry. You know, people yeah. are just oh, interrupting okay. you, Ryan. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, um, I, I've been treated pretty damn well by Marvel. So like, mm -hmm. I don't want to say that they're like, I, I don't think that, I don't think that probably anybody makes what they should. Um, but I don't know how you find the, the truth out about that. Maybe I am being compensated fairly for what I do. I don't know. Mm, sure. um, but, you know, I think it's a good question. I really don't know. I, cause, cause you, on the one hand you do look at their business and it's like, sometimes it does seem like, Oh, well, you know, Spider-Man is what sells this book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why do we need to pay, you know, Mm -hmm. so right. and so but then again i think that, that the time the time in the industry when the creators became the biggest names yep was when they sold the most comics right so that seems to me but that you know then you get into like all the variants and all that stuff which sure. is obviously also a huge part of it so you never know what really brought that on or why that happened yeah, um, but in my opinion, it does seem like when you have a creator that transcends the medium, like a group of creators that are transcending the medium, that that expands the medium. 
Totally. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't, I don't know that you can, like, you can't expand Spider-Man's reach any further. <laughs> Spider-Man no. is global, yeah. right? So then the, the thing that you can expand, I feel like, is the visibility of your creators. So, but then right. again, the other thing is the creators have to want that. You know, like, yeah. I think that I always think about that with the old image guys. How weird is it that we got these, I mean, I would say that, like, uh, Rob, Jim, and Todd all love talking. Right. And being in the spotlight, mm -hmm. you know, and that's rare for, for artists. I think that like, if you think about artists now, like most of them don't say much at all. Well, look, uh, look I at, like uh, to talk, obviously I started a damn podcast. Damn you know? right. Yeah. yeah. But look at, uh, look at like the second wave of image creators, like Sam Keith, who only talked about how shitty he was and how bad the book was and doesn't right. understand why anyone likes it. And then when like IDW picked up the max again, he's, you know, he had to do a press tour and he's like, I don't know why they did it. I mean, the book's over, but like, here you go oh, again, geez. I guess. And I'm like, dude, people like yeah, it. I don't get what exactly. you're saying. But it's like that's 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 a lot of artists. It's just like I don't know, man. Like I just like, but I, yeah, I'm just, I just, it's, just it's, leave it's, me alone and let me draw. I would say it's, I'm, it's the majority for sure. Yeah. So I think everyone you, everyone you know, in comics hard. should have a podcast so we can find out who's weird. <laughs> yeah. I feel like just assume everyone is, and then just everyone. be surprised yeah, yeah, when you yeah. meet yeah. them, right? Like, yeah, they work on comics. They got here for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan's a weirdo. Ethan, we're super fucking weird, I say. That's fair. Mm. That's yeah. fair. Mm. I know. Hey, yeah. You guys cut cut movies, recut movies for no he reason. Brings it he up always brings this up. Every fucking time. I can't believe it. Uh, do, you, do you? Do you do fan edits we, of uh, Well, of yeah. We, I mean, we famously have re-edited Spider-Man 3 and both of the amazing Spider-Man movies into much nice. better versions. And that's what we're here to plug today. If you go to no, just <laughs> yeah, get Spider Man three point one. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I I will admit I I did do a fan edit of Spider Man two once. Yeah, yeah. of two. Of yeah, two. I got what a problem with. I cut out a lot of bullshit and I grabbed stuff from three and just put that because oh, three is wow. three just has like three three has like fourteen minutes of good stuff in it. So I just used all fourteen <laughs> minutes and put and just reinserted that into Spider Man two. Wow, you know, like all right. You know, when Spider Man goes to, he's delivering pizzas. Uh, I just have the Sandman fight in there because Sandman only needs to be fought and then he goes away. That's it. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. he throws the pizza and then just goes and fights Sandman because, like, he threw the pizza. We don't need to find out where the pizza goes home at night, who it's married mm. to. Like, we don't need to follow okay. that fucking origin story of the pizza. Okay. We don't need to see the guy see it and then have a pizza. Like, it's just bullshit. So it's okay. just, it's just all, it's all nonsense. I'm sorry. I, I also no. like editing. So it's <laughs> send us the link. We want it. You it's somewhere. To see it. it. It's somewhere out there. I put it up on like one of those big <laughs> website things that you download movies from. I don't remember what it's called. We're it's all good. freaks and we all want to see each other's fan edits. That's, well, that's right. Fucking good. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan will fan edit a football game or something. That's what kind of guy he is. <laughs> I didn't realize that someone could that's lose pissing. more respect for someone than Ryan just did for me, but it, yeah. you know, here it is. But <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I find, down, I find this actually, I actually, so I make fun of them, but I bring this up too. I find it so heartening that they do this because <laughs> I wish that I would do, I don't do anything that I don't get, get paid for. <laughs> like that's my life that's called and being a smart the way person that my that's mind just, operates that's is like, heavy yeah is this worth my what time? do i get out of this right yeah yeah ethan yeah. and i seem to have a thing where we only do things we don't get paid for yeah up until right. recently much, yeah that was <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much been the name of the game for the past few years so. yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah no, I, I I learned how to edit because I was, you know, what it was it was just it was just just way too much time and rage, and it was just like mm -hmm. the the Phantom Menace had come out. I'd been complaining about it for a year and a half, mm -hmm. two years, and then I was like, you know what, I could fix this. And then I learned mm -hmm. how to edit by re-editing the Phantom Menace, and I'm there like, you go, man. and you know what I did? I made a shorter bad movie. That nice. What I ended up doing. <laughs> uh, but still, you know, but it but it taught me a lot of tricks, and I do that. Like editing got me into YouTube and everything. So like I'm I I guess I I guess I'm really I, I owe a debt of gratitude to the Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. So lucky Amen. me. Amen. Thank you, George. For uh, thank you King for Jar Jar. King George. Because without George, because without Jar Jar, I wouldn't you, know George, what to cut out for everything. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. for it all for Ryan's a for, big for, for Star Wars fan Ryan Stegman thanks yeah famously <laughs> yeah. 
I have no idea if that's true or not. The sarcasm is <laughs> we've, we've, it's absolutely true. Several episodes where we have talked to um, mostly with Charles Soul, where ah. Ethan and I will talk Charles's ear off about his Star Wars endeavors, and Ryan will sit silently in the corner <laughs> of the screen, <laughs> just just looking like he wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dislike Star Wars. Let me get that out there. Let me make mm-hmm. sure that people... Right, yeah, you don't want to get... I didn't uh... see them. Yes. I don't know how I didn't see them as a kid. I did not. I did not see them until I was uh, in my 20s. Wow, and so yeah. And so I, I think that's so hard to like convince somebody that this is the greatest thing ever when you're like... Well, well the first time I saw it, I was like, well, this is a kid's movie. <laughs> right. And people were like, yeah, yeah. It's the best kid's movie. And I was like... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So now I have to reframe the way I watch it. And then I did, I, I have been showing them to my kids and seeing it through their lens has been amazing. Sure. And I will say the most recent Star Wars movie was a movie that my kids were the least happy when they left the movie theater. After seeing it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's completely fair. Yeah. I think we I were mean, they all love pretty everything. Unhappy. But they love that. everything, but they love that one like punch drunk, like just like what was all that flashing <laughs> on the screen? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, it's it, there's a lot going on. Mm. Uh, so uh, we're winding down, but I'm really excited because uh, this is an opportunity to really get into it. And Ryan, you seem really like excited and passionate about it because it's basically just giving you an opportunity to fan a flame that I think has been in you for a while. This desire to kind of right. like you know pay homage to what inspired you to when you were a fledgling uh, artist and getting into the industry yourself like just this desire to kind of like return to this this primordial kind of truth of the comic book industry which was the image revolution like just this right this group of artists who said f you to everybody and then made their own thing and made a mint for a two or three year right. window <laughs> right Mm-hmm. Uh, and all but it I mean, takes images you- still image still exists. That's I mean, true. Yeah, it's just a completely it different thing. Great stuff, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But but they but, they did such a good job of building that company that it, it was able to sustain itself. Right, and it, it, like, all it takes is a, is like a small window, right? Because like mm-hmm. all it takes is two or three years, maybe one or two now because everything's accelerated. Right. But like to change everything, and uh, so there's a possibility here. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reality is you're funding some of like you know some of the most creative people in the industry to just make whatever they want as opposed to trying to think about overhead and sales and just just make it make it and go right Uh, right and well i was gonna say one of the cool things about this era too is that you know i talked about the studio thing but i think that a great thing about it is the digital aspect of it where a Hmm. studio now could be I, I don't have oh. to, like the old image guys, buy the new guys an apartment right? and then have a physical place they go to. It, I could just talk to them on Skype or whatever, you know, like yeah. look at what they're doing, fix it for them. I mean, we, I do that with my friends already. I have a group of friend, peers that I talk to every day on Skype. Uh, you can hear them all on Stegman and his amazing friends. <laughs> <laughs> Link in the but, description. Um, yeah. The, I, like I, we will visit. Like sometimes I'll be like, I can't get this drawing right, or somebody else will be like, I can't get this drawing right. They put it in, I take it in, and I, you know, do something up on it real quick, and they're like, Yes, that's exactly what I couldn't get right. Yeah. And you know, like we help each other in that way. So, um, you know, I just think that th- this is like a, a opportunity to do the thing that we want to do with less overhead, so that it doesn't have to be the company doesn't have to be generating millions and millions of dollars. They're going to be generating just enough to fund creativity. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. And that's what I want. Well, and hopefully fund you to continue to be creative and not have to like do other things that draw attention from that effort. Because you right. got to make Absolutely. it can't just be break even. You got to, you know, it's like uh, it's like movie budgets where it's like, oh, two hundred million dollars. It made two hundred million dollars. No, it failed. It's got to be double. You got to make more. You got to make twice yeah. what that is. Um, I still since since we're writing down, I want. Yes. You still want to buy a house so, on the lake? Not, but not, not, not the nice yeah. house on the lake. <laughs> not the nice yeah. house on no. the lake. I wanted to say, since we're winding uh, winding down, I, and I'm re- you know reading from my ad copy here, I can't believe we haven't mentioned that if you are a freak like the four of us, and you like signed stuff, and you like exclusive variants of stuff, <laughs> and you like crazy collectible stuff, 
you get that kind of thing if you sign up right now. And so you should. You can find all kinds of crazy awesome stuff. Not only are you getting all the stuff we've talked about and the cool like look into everything, but with these subscriptions, you can get like exclusive stuff from Donnie and Ryan that you don't get anywhere else uh, if you are so inclined. And I think you you probably are. So you should definitely go sign up. Right. Right. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll, th- you know, I'm going to throw it to a couple of questions if you guys don't mind, just to, yeah, just to kind of see what people say. Uh, the new Ethan says, uh, yo, everybody won't be able to be here. So he's not actually here. So, you know, thanks a lot, but uh, he does want to know uh, from Ryan, what's your favorite, ep- what was your favorite issue to draw? I'm sure you get this question. I'm sure this is not a question you get to, you get asked a lot, uh, which is what is your favorite issue you've, you, you got to draw and how do the boys stay so supple? Well, uh, you know, Ethan and I can take the lead on that, and yeah, uh, you know, the it's uh, it takes a a lot of okay. Anyway, so regimen. my favorite issue, moisturizer. Yeah, my favorite. Go ahead. My pay, my favorite issue would be probably King and Black Five, just because the more recent the issue, the better I feel like I am as an artist. I felt like that was my kind of high point artistically. Now, I am better now and doing. This vanish number one yeah so that would be the answer but you guys haven't seen that so i'm going to leave you with king and black five plus i drew some pretty wild stuff my sons just read all of king and black and uh my son is right over here waving at me like a, a <laughs> creep right now um <laughs> but they uh my youngest he would call me into the room and he'd say i can't decide which one is my favorite drawing in, in issue five he was like, it's, is it this one when Venom lands or is it this one with his axe? Excellent. And then also he called me in for one drawing to, to tell me specifically, I don't like this one. So oh, great. Like <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't like this. Um, but uh, yeah, that King and Black 5 was definitely a, a high point for me. Nice. Uh, Yaheen Alam had an interesting question because it came up in this discussion and it was thoughts on the deal with DC Comics and Webtoon. I think it's a great because Webtoon are the future. Uh, I I don't agree with that but i do uh fi- i do respect it and i'm just interested like to see what do you guys think about the the dc deal with webtoon apparently people are sitting on uh personally nice stacks of cash from webtoon i saw some people saying that that like that like webtoon is like doing dc a favor here i saw that on twitter i don't mm. know if that's true i don't know much about webtoon but I, if i know true, they're a insane. heavy sponsor so i can see them not not for me but yeah, uh, right. you know we're open by the way but uh, <laughs> right yeah ryan uh um, anytime that you can expand into this sort of digital realm, um, I'm all for the effort. Just give it a shot, see what happens and stick with it for a little while. Don't, don't just get in and, uh, get out, but hopefully they'll right. stick, stick it out and see, cause somebody pointed out what if, what if DC had stuck it out with Zuda comics Ugh. that they started ages ago? Yeah. Like that would be huge now, but they didn't stick it out. They didn't have enough, you know, patience with it. No, uh, no. so Hopefully they can have patience with this and, and figure out how that can all work. Yeah. That's a way to, way to pull Zuda comics. Nice reference. I haven't yeah. thought about Zuda in forever. I also had a fundamental problem with Zuda comics, but I do appreciate like that. They were trying something. They were trying anything. And that's one of those things where it's like, I miss that a little bit. Like I miss the, 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 when the big two, and now I guess it's just up to you guys. It's up to the creators to kind of do anything, but like, man, Remember uh-huh. when Marvel would just do anything because they thought like it would just make them a dollar and they needed that dollar? Like, right. oh my God. Right. <laughs> anything. Got milk ads, uh, comic books on CDs. Is anybody <laughs> buying, like <laughs> just trying anything? Card games made by the president and they're terrible. But, uh, you know. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think that we saw we saw a big push at one point by the big companies to get into this digital realm. Obviously, yeah. we have Comixology, but there's still a, uh, something that they haven't tapped into. I don't know what that thing is, but they made a big push. It didn't work because it what the 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 technology wasn't ready. Yeah, and I think that made them shy away from it for a long time. And I think that all of us you're, we're talking about the Comixology originals. We're talking about yeah. Webtoon. We're talking about Substack right now. Like, yep this might be the time where we finally solve it right. where this time it lasts. Hopefully I think because you're right. We really do need to figure it out. I think so too. Yeah. And I think, you know, the digital space, like if you've, I, I, I pay close attention to this stuff because it's interesting to me and because I like talking about it, but like, you know, 
people assume a lot about the business angle of the comic book industry, myself included, but like uh, with respect to sales and how they're like, well, you know, the digital copies must be selling X, Y, Z. And it's like, it's not like it's, it, it doesn't sell nearly as high right. as people think. And it's like, but why? Like, and that's the question to answer because right. the, because everything is on digital, like everything is digital and, and it should be because it's accessible immediately. You, the whole problem with any piece right. of art is barrier to entry, right? And it's like, if I can do anything with this thing, then you should be there. Like if you can produce, it should be there unless sure. it's like oils, but it's like, I, you know, well, take a picture of it then for, for God's sake. <laughs> I think that when we used to talk digital too, we used to scare the retailers like we were going to oh, all totally. be reading digitally. But think about think about Substack and what we're doing on Substack in this way. Yeah, there is still going to be a book that is at the retailers. What we are going to do with this Substack thing is enhance the whole thing. Right. We're going to give you an enhancement of that thing that you can then buy at your retailer. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a billboard for the whole thing, mm -hmm. but it also just gives you more of that thing that you love. And so maybe that's the model. Maybe that's what we've been missing. May, you know, maybe it's, I don't know, like there's a million other things that it could be. Yeah. But uh, I, I do think that we're, we're, we're getting close. We're on the verge. Yeah. Well, the real, I think, and if I may speculate for a moment, you know, the real litmus test will be the subscription model because right now right. you guys get to, fund your your dreams are fun like not even you're funding them they're funded your dreams are coming true right. they're happening mm -hmm. for the next wave wh who aren't getting grants that will right. be the real test will be if it's sustainable yep. and if it is absolutely it'll be a whole new ball game that is the paradigm shift like that's the big sure. shift is mm -hmm. because right. i mean and you see right now with patreon and everything but substack offers i think a better deal and i think you can speak to that a little more intimately with the idea that like Substack offers a better percentage than the competitors. I think, so. I don't know the whole deal with Patreon, but I mean, Substack really does just feel like a souped up sort of Patreon yeah. where it makes a lot more sense for this to be delivered directly to your inbox as well. So, right. uh, I mean, I was, I was kind of like circled the Patreon thing, but it, it felt like this is going to require too much stuff for me. That isn't me drawing the book. Exactly. And that's no. kind of the beauty of the sub stack is that I get to just draw the book. Yeah. yeah. And make posts. And, you oh, know. sure, of course. But, yeah. I, but basically, the, the, it boils down to I'm going to be drawing the book and you're going to see how I draw the book. You're going to get to talk to me about drawing the book. Right. Uh, but the book is the main focus. Um, you know, Vanish is the main focus of what, you know, why I'm doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so Vanish is the first thing. And I don't want to get into the next thing, but I assume you are planning for more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, again, like I was saying before, like we have to get our feet underneath us. We have been running straight through this brick wall and we just blasted through the brick wall, uh, which was, you know, putting it out there to, for people to, you know, launching the sub stack. Totally. Uh, now, we need to sort of slow down and really get our bearings and make just this thing. So we haven't, we haven't decided on anything beyond this. I have some ideas about what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in my mind, the, the perfect world would be vanished, would go to issue 500, you know, like we sure, have course. one of those types of things. Yeah. And then, you know, like obviously we could do other things and uh, uh, you know, Maybe I'll find my Greg Capullo to draw my to draw Vanish while I create something else or something, you know. But you know totally. that that's again like no reason even to even think about think that about right that. Now. Yeah, we're just that's focused just, on like, this. But yeah, but yeah, that's the right. thing is that the potential's there, and th it's very interesting. I, I'm, I'm on one hand, I am very excited for all of you because of how excited you all are about it. You know, it's like you're you're given uh, an opportunity that like. It, it, it's it's it seems too good to be true and so it's time to jump on it <laughs> like you gotta right. do it yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it, yeah. It's I'm I'm actually kind of impressed by how clandestine it turned out to be for you, where you were like, well, we were already working on this thing, and then they just gave me a platform <laughs> for it, so we just took the thing we were building and just put it here. And so, because I got to tell yeah. you, when it launched, I was like, this is a well-oiled machine. You guys have a whole freaking right. plan, don't you? And it's like, yeah, we did for like a year. And that's kind Ooh. of the case with with Donny Cates' uh, stuff that he has coming to our social yes. as well, is that the, the two books that he's been talking about on there, those have been in the works for a long time too. So yeah, you're certainly yeah. not... Yeah, the one you feed in flood with his wife Megan Hutchison Cates. The those the you're certainly not subscribing to something that's like just getting started. Like you're subscribing to these processes that have been going for a while. So there's a lot to catch you up on. There's yeah. like there's a lot to consume already. Uh, that's really exciting from a few books from these guys. Um, yeah, there's a lot to look at. Yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and clarifying a few questions that uh i'm happy to say i wasn't wrong about but i'm glad that we got some uh, some concrete <laughs> answers about uh yeah. with respect to what this is uh we will see more and of course if you want to know more and you want to actually follow along with ryan and donnie's uh, careers and what they're doing in this new phase uh you can follow them on substack i'm going to make a, li a link in the description below this video available for you so you can click those uh and of course checking out more from uh ryan and his amazing <coughs> friends they're uh also a terrific podcast that you can listen to or watch which is a, a ton of fun thanks, um, thanks man but uh, i especially want to thank our viewers for joining us and indulging us on this uh this 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 chat and uh mm -hmm. we'll see you guys next time with another episode but gentlemen thank you so much for being here is there anything else that you guys want to want to throw out there before we wrap up mm. mr mm. Steinman. Um, quit your jobs chase your dreams there bro. it is your jobs and bro, chase your that's... dreams amen and thank amen. you sal for having us on it's been awesome oh my amen. my pleasure my pleasure Appreciate yes it. thank you so much thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you guys next time bye-bye